Hi, I'm Karen Boniker, Painter Master, and I'm here to set you up with a really fun tutorial that I think you'll enjoy. What we're going to be doing today is a still life based upon the image, the reference image that you see right here of some beautiful summer roses. One of the things you'll find as you start this tutorial is that you'll have all the resources that I'm going to be using for your tutorial. And to access those, you'll want to go to digitalartacademy.com and go to the brush shop. And in the brush shop, you'll find the brushes, the image, and any other resources that I'm going to be using in this particular tutorial. And you're free to download those and use them. So let's get started. Some of the basics here of setting up your composition. We're going to begin by opening up the canvas that I'll have available for you in the resources for free. So you'll simply want to go File and choose Open and open that background image. And when it opens, it's going to open on the canvas layer, the very bottom layer, which is the canvas. And above that, we're going to start building our composition up. And there's a couple of ways, depending upon your skill set and the way that you like to work, that we can go about getting those flowers in and getting everything set up. One of them is to use the File Place command to actually place the reference image on a layer. And that way, you can use it to sketch your beginning image. The other option, of course, is to simply add a new layer. And on that layer, just go ahead and build a basic, uh, a basic sketch to begin with. So depending upon where you are in your skill set and what you feel comfortable doing, um, I'll take you through those steps. If you choose the File Place Command option, what we'll want to do is I'm going to bring up the opacity a bit on this so you can see this. You'll notice that we have that layer of the rose image set to multiply, which gives us visibility or transparency down through the layers. So you'll simply want to go to File and choose the option Place. And once you do that, the image will be placed on its own layer. You can go ahead and resize it, reposition it uh, where you'd like. And at that point, once you're done, go ahead and set it to Multiply Blend Mode. And what I'd like you to do is, from your Canvas layer, go ahead and add a new layer directly above the canvas. And that's the layer that you, you'll create your sketch on. You'll notice some of the panels that I have open on my interface. And one of them is a, called a Custom Palette. And on this custom palette, I only have three items right now. Dull Conte, Heavy Texture Knife, and Pastel Blender. Dull Conte is found in the, up. let's go up to the top here, in the Chalk, Pastels, and Crayons. And when you get to that brush, we'll go ahead and select that, Chalk, Pastels, and Crayons. And we're going to go to the heavy Conte, or actually the dull Conte is what we're using here. And in order to add it to a custom palette, all you need to do, it's very easy, very quick, and a wonderful way to work with your brushes, is to hold down the shift key and using your mouse or your Wacom stylus, drag it out, and then let it go, and it creates a nice custom palette for you that you can go ahead and build upon. The next brush we were using was the Heavy Texture, and that brush is found in the Thick Paint brush category. So we'll go to that brush, and again, Heavy Texture Knife. You'll repeat the option again by holding the Shift key down and dragging it out, and now you have uh, those two brushes on your custom palette. The last brush is called the KB Pastel or Pastel Blender and this is not included in your default brushes but you can download this from the brush shop at digitalartacademy.com and it's there for you to use if you wish. Otherwise you can use any brush or any blender that you feel uh, that you'd like to use. Okay.
So we've got our custom palette up and ready to go and we're going to be using brushes from that custom palette. I have my paper panel open and the shortcut for opening that up is is control 9 for PC and command 9 for Mac. Okay, and that will open up your paper panel. You will also find this Just Juicy brush uh, paper panel for you in those resources that I promised you and you can use any of these nice um, paper textures. To import a paper texture, simply go to Manage Libraries, choose Import Paper Library, make sure you unzip those, and then simply import them into Painter, into your paper's library. Okay? Now, the last thing we're going to be using here is the reference image. And I've loaded this reference image from my desktop. And again, this image will be available to you if you'd like to use it. Otherwise, use one of your own. That's not a problem. To load an image, simply choose Open Reference Image. Go ahead and migrate to the place where you saved the image and just simply select it. And it will open up in the Reference Image panel. To open the panel up, simply go to Window and choose Reference Image and that will open your Reference Image panel for you. When we are working with thick paint, we're also going to work with the new panel in the thick paint panel options that I think uh, you'll really enjoy. Uh, it makes it much easier to move through the different capabilities of this beautiful and amazing brush category. And to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and select from my custom palette the heavy texture knife. And so we're going to be working with that. We're going to be taking a look at resetting the brush to default so we know that that brush is set to default. Then what I'd like you to do is on this little blending panel, go ahead and click on it and open what we call the blending panel and that will open this up for you. You will have not only the thick paint but you'll also want to choose the wetness option here and select that and open the panel and I'll go ahead and repeat that so it opens for you. And this is the most important panel that we're going to be working with. Uh, this one is the one where we will be working with grain height and on the thick paint wetness option here, we can control how wet or dry that brush is. We can also choose whether it's going to interact with paper grain. And of course, setting that paper grain height is important to create lots of texture in our brush stroke. Hi, and welcome back. Let's go ahead and go on to the next step here where we're going to start developing a little bit more of the detail of the painting. We're going to be utilizing the heavy texture knife and what I'd like to do is show you a little bit about this brush so it will help you control it in terms of getting some of the texture or the effect out of thick paint that is so beautiful. One of the most important things to remember um, in Painter 2021 is that we have some new layer options for thick paint. And one of those is what we call the visible depth option here, where we can actually control the amount of impasto or the amount of the thickness that that brush stroke from the thick paint brush category imparts on the canvas. So this becomes really exciting in terms of working with not only thick paint, but some of our favorite custom brushes or other brushes in painter. Simply speaking, we can now use a lot of our regular default brushes and some of many, many, many of our custom brushes on a thick paint layer. So this expands the creativity. It expands and opens up the cre creativity that you have within Painter and within these beautiful, amazing thick paint brushes. So we're going to right click on this and convert this layer now to thick paint. Uh, when we do that, you'll see 
To complete the conversion, Corel Painter will delete all the impasto and that's okay because what we're going to do now is we're going to build this up a little bit further and we're going to uh, enable and create again some of our own texture within this. Uniform uh, thickness is the option that I'm choosing here and what I can do is if I don't want it to be quite as strong I can bring that setting down and you'll notice that the uh, how it imparts the thickness of this particular image it really tones it down a little bit or I can go all the way to the extreme and I can uh, impart lots of texture within those brush strokes but I like to be somewhere right around the middle here and this 80 80 percent or so is a good good fit for this particular image and I'll select OK so what I what I have now is a an image that I've started painting and it's on a thick paint layer where I can go ahead and pick up my heavy texture knife and I can begin painting right on that layer and I've got all this wonderful thick paint or and let me explain this I can go ahead and add another thick paint layer directly above this layer and begin doing my detail work on that layer. So this helps you to create all these beautiful levels or all these beautiful layers of thick paint as you start uh, to develop your image. So I'm basically selected this um, heavy texture knife and I want you to come over to the size option and I'm going to reset this brush to default because I want you to notice something here. At default this brush is set to bearing. Now bearing is a, is a good expression setting for anybody who does not have or work with a, a Wacom art pen. Now the Wacom art pen is my preference. This is the pen that I use in extensively in most of my work. And with that said, the Wacom Art Pen allows for 360 degree rotation of your brush stroke. So for me, I will go to the size setting, select the size option and come down to the angle setting. And instead of bearing, I'm gonna set this to rotation. And in the angle range, I'm going to set it to 360 degrees. And in the step option, I'm going to change that from 6 to 4. And then I'm just going to go ahead and begin. And you can see as I rotate my brush, you can see how that how each brush, each brush stroke rotates. And I'm able to get lots of beautiful rotation within that brush. I'm going to continue to use my Alt key. And I'm going to start utilizing the color harmony panel here as well. So you'll notice that when I either select something from the reference image or from the canvas, you'll notice how the harmonies change. I have the analogous, I have the complementary and monochromatic light and dark enabled. And I can do, set that up by simply selecting the flyout and selecting those harmonies that I want to show on my panel. Now if I'm going to be working within this pink palette, I'm going to go ahead and let this monochromatic light go one value up by clicking this first uh, square here and then I'm going to lock it. And I'm going to go ahead and lock these other options so I'm working in a very disciplined panel now a very disciplined color palette. And I can uh, actually start going in here and forming my roses and uh, really getting um, some of the details in. Now when I paint, and this is a concept that's sometimes hard to come to grips with, but when I paint I'm looking at the shape of things instead of what those <laughs> what those objects actually are. So instead of thinking of a rose, I'm thinking of the shapes that I see within those roses, within those leaves. So if I start working on this particular rose here, I start seeing that I have a, a lighter value over here. It kind of folds and uh, then I have this darker area here that kind of comes up and 
then I have this beautiful little shape that kind of pulls out from the edge and I'm going to take advantage of that and I'm just going to begin getting my shapes of my rows in. Now once you've created uh, your rows and you've got your shapes in and you like what's going on, you know, feel free to kind of go in there and sample different colors, build up your roses with different values. Uh, you may want to pull in some peach colors or some um, beautiful yellows. Uh, this is a pretty color right here that you might want to pull in uh, in a certain area of your painting. And color has so much to do with this uh, process here. I might take that down a little bit darker and I'm going to start doing some folding of these edges and some shaping of these edges. Um, I love, you know, working with these light and dark values, so I'm always trying to pull that out. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll just take my own artistic license to change the shape of a rose or maybe to add some additional petals, all the while picking up color as I go through. And I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can really see this thick paint as it starts to develop. Anytime, um, you'll also, let's go back to the paper panel. You can see that I have this overlay texture selected. I have the grain height. I can bring that up a little bit higher if I want to impart a little more grain into my brush stroke. And the other thing is, if you feel like you start to get lost in terms of where you want um, certain details to be, you can always call upon your sketch again, enable that, open it up, open the visibility icon so you can kind of see where you uh, had sketched in certain things, and then um, go from there. So at this point, it almost becomes, uh, once you've gotten that uh, beautiful underpainting done, it gives you that opportunity to kind of go with the flow, so to speak, and pick up and paint the way you want. And let's, um, I'm going to pick up a really dark color for the center of this rose and just do a few little brush strokes in there, a little bit lighter in here, and then I'm going to start to build this rose up with a little bit of detail. And because this uh, brush has this amazing ability to uh, rotate the brush stroke, you can see that you can get some beautiful effects here. Very natural. And again, I'll sample some of the colors that I see, pull out some rose petals, and maybe go a little darker back here and pull that edge out and around. And if you think um, one of the things you might find is that all of a sudden you feel like you want to switch palettes and go to some different colors here, then feel free to do that. And we'll just continue to build these beautiful rose petals with this wonderful brush. 
remember that you can also move into different paper textures to allow for that um, different texture to come through in your brush stroke. Notice how I'm building up and just kind of digging into this area here just to give that extra bit of texture. And then maybe a stem coming down here. Now, I have a vase that's down below here. And I'm going to pick up some of these blues that I see in the background here and just kind of pull some of that in here. Nice and thick. And then I have these big leaves down here that I'll go ahead and paint into as well. And pull some lighter values here and there. So I have to say that, um, you know, I've done a lot of oil painting and acrylic painting in the past, and Working with these brushes now has become something so exciting to play with, just so intuitive now. We're going to go ahead and add a new layer, and we'll go ahead and um, pick up again the Pastel Blender brush, and we'll go ahead and con uh, continue painting on that thick paint layer and I'm just going to do some blending here just to imply that there is a, a vase below this I also have a paper texture enabled from the shape option for this brush so if you hit shape apply dab stencil paper, um, you'll pick up the current paper texture that you're using. And again, I love to soften edges, so a lot of times I'll go through and just pull out some of these softer edges in the painting. It's always nice to have a combination of hard and soft edges. And at this point it almost becomes a process of going in back and forth into the painting and developing these soft edges, adding a new thick paint layer and going in and doing some more thick paint option. So here I might want to add another thick paint layer and we'll go back to the uh, heavy knife and maybe sample some color here and do a little more <clears throat> detail work again. And I think at this point it's just about done in terms of creating the roses themselves. And I think, um, you know, you just would have to go and take it as far as you want. If you tend to like more, uh, more detail, then this would be a place where you could go in and uh, do a little more detail work. You could add some more roses. Some more flowers. And 
incorporate some more color. Pull in some of that pretty orange that I see down here. Maybe here and there, just to, again, that having that feeling of continuity within the painting is a good thing. Take our uh, pastel blender again, a little smaller brush, and um, we'll go ahead and continue. And at this point, um, I'll go ahead and activate this setting in special layers, preferences, to not ask me again. So if this brush is compatible with a thick paint layer, that means it will just uh, create a, it'll go ahead and continue to paint on the thick paint. And that's what I want here. Okay. We'll zoom out a little bit on this. Bigger brush here. We'll take the reset setting up on this brush now. I'm going to activate my sketch layer so I can kind of see that where the vase was. And get some more of that nice color in there. Close that. And we'll just imply. Take my reset up a little higher now. And we'll just add some very loose leaves and foliage. So we're not disturbing the thick paint, but just adding more to it. And I think that'll do it. We'll go right back to our heavy texture knife one more time. And I think we'll go ahead and add another thick paint layer. Remember, you can just have fun with these thick paint layers. You can go as far as you want. little smaller brush size there. And just a little more fine detail work. about it. And for me, I don't tend to like to go too far with these. I like to keep them relatively simple. Go back to my blender.
and that should do it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Take care.